Paul Triple H talked yeah. about when WrestleMania was in New York, New Jersey. Yeah. yeah. He went and it, and visited the training center that the, the Giants had. No, that's the first place he went in. Yeah. Yes, With and he said yeah, exactly. And said yeah. this was sort of like okay, we want to yeah. do this, but better. Yeah, yeah. It's in, even real, now it's almost outgrown itself. Not even a year, you know. So. Uh, it's just uh, facilities are, are, like I said, if, if, the, if the Giants would come and look at this, they could maybe see a clone of it a little bit, but they have facilities upstairs, uh, you know, of, of, uh, you know, places where the kids can eat, they can go on their computer, they can go in, uh, when I give them a, a project to, uh, a creative project and learning to talk, then they have a room they go in, and in that room, they go in by themselves. I can see it on my TV in my office, watching them in the room and they can try to do it's just amazing you know what i mean and we were in the car looking in the rearview mirror and me trying to be dust road the american dream you know what i mean uh and uh, that was my that was my training facility you know six pack of beer the next town training in front of the deal right there and that was it you know slim jims a couple of uh, bald eggs you know jesus but uh it's really cool and the workout systems so i can brag on it a lot but paul uh yeah he h done a great job with it and uh, kind of pet project with him that WWE turned over to him and he will be the heir to the throne and him and Steph worked very hard at it so I'm very proud of it yes. WWE Network something else you also mentioned yeah. now people can go and watch Dusty Rhodes during his heyday and yeah. all with Championship Wrestling from yeah. Florida or if they want to see Dusty and Polka Dots they can see that they as well. They can see whatever or they can go all the way back to uh, Florida they can go to everywhere that I went and it's just uh, it's amazing now the kids say, well, they talk about Dusty Rhodes, who is he? You know, Dad, you always talk about Dusty Rhodes, Dusty Rhodes. Well, here, just, just plug this in, hit this deal, Dusty Rhodes comes up. Him and Ernie Ladd, Tallahassee, Florida, 1974, poof. So it's amazing. And uh, so, uh, you know, it, it's good. I, uh, Vince had uh, had a conversation with me right after they launched it. And uh, well, we're the same age, me and him, and he... Uh, grew up in the business together and he says, uh, dream you, now become immortal. So, <laughs> that's cool. So I said, so have you. So there you <laughs> So have you. <laughs> so that's anyway, awesome. it's good stuff, yeah. Some of the guys that have come through the Performance Center lately, some guys like The Shield, yeah. the Wyatt family. Right, right, yeah. Bray Wyatt especially, Dusty, yeah. did you have a lot of influence with Bray coming up through, or was, yeah, you know, I know yeah, a lot of yeah, people, he was, but, uh, he was, uh, he especially was, this uh, character. Uh, you know, Wyndham, uh, he was on my radar and his radar, and we said, talk, I actually produced, uh, with the, we helped produce with the, uh, a great uh, production company, uh, the first video, all the videos you've seen, that's what we sent there to them to look at. So said, this is a character I got in mind, what do you think? He said, it's, all, it's unbelievable. It's all so then you turn him over to the big club, so he leaves the minor leagues, now he goes to the big club. I say, Vince, he can throw 100 miles an hour. 100, he can throw 100 miles an hour, but he can't throw a curve. Well, we'll teach him to throw a curve. 100 miles an hour, we're not going to send him home. So we went with that philosophy with him and uh, Shield, and the same, you, you know, you go down with uh, the first kid that came out of uh, our first facility was here with Steve Kern at FCW. And uh, the first guy to come out of that was uh, Shane, the world champion three times. So we've had a good list of 40 or 50 people that's made this thing work. And now they have their own brand, NXT. They have Raw, SmackDown. Now they have their own brand with NXT. Uh, so it's always a work in progress with them. But uh, uh, I tell you, the future looks good. And uh, with all the 24 hours of programming, there's a, a great opportunity now for them to do other things, to be announced, to have their own cooking show. But what do they want to have? I mean, you know, because uh, of the growth of the network. Everything is branching out. You yeah, can do more yeah, than yeah, one yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, stocks are up, everything's cool, so we're doing well. The night that Goldust, Cody, you're there, teaming together, yeah. beat the shield for the belt. There it is. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's it, that backstage right before we came out. Wow, that's yeah. awesome, Dustin. Yeah. That, yeah. How do you just quantify what happened that night and that whole how that whole thing went down like that? It's amazing. If you're a fan and you watch and you watch what I've done and, and you watch our industry uh, grow and then you see something that where you say, man, that is really raw emotion. That's really happening. And I even tear up when I think about it. But it's an opportunity in my age to go in. I mean, it's not like Archie can go out and say, okay, Peyton, okay, can I uh, throw me a pass out here in the game? You can't do that. But in our game, they were able to do that. 
So we shared a, an unbelievable bond of, of something that was probably the most important thing that I've ever done. And, and, uh, it was outstanding. It was outstanding. Coach Cody's still in his 20s, and Dustin came back phenomenal. And uh, uh, you know, so we look to the future and the ropes. Uh, the ropes so it was cool. It was a great night. Really well. Good stuff. Yeah, to be able to go out and say, you know, being a part of something like that was was uh, was important. So, and uh, you know, the the kids were great. And, uh, Cody uh, just really sharp knows what he wants to be and kind of spearheaded that thing a little bit and uh, the shield were the, the kids that I trained just prior to that you know and there they are in the ring across from uh, you know so it was a big night for us lastly Dusty yeah who are some of the best trash talkers that you come across whether it be in wrestling or other pro sports because I'm I sure think, that's I a think, thing for uh, you I think uh, uh, Ernie Ladd was a really cool trash talker man you know what I mean he, but he and what a not, great football player too yeah but he would not stop I mean, he would go, uh, we're driving to Houston, and uh, to get him to shut up, I don't, I mean, I'd have to feed him some, you know what I mean, but uh, he, he uh, you know, and uh, Tyson and, uh, you know, Mike Tyson, it's not a trash talker like Ali, but he's become kind of one, but he's really funny if you listen, listen to him, because when he got inducted to the Hall of Fame, he was so enamored me and him both are meeting each other and everything so he's out there and he almost called me the n-word he said he did you remember the uh, the speech that he did you know he said oh man you know he's way he's, he's been uh, he's been this for a long time you know I said, man my, michael you know come on man don't tell me but uh you know he's really cool a lot of the rappers call me and they're big fans Darius record's a big fan and they all try to imitate me and and, and do this stuff so at least I've, I've left some type of imprint or legacy with him you know uh, you know, and this kid this year with, uh, uh, was it Seattle or the one that went on? Richard Sherman. Sherman. Yeah, a great football player, but he just had that one moment of, I'm just going to go off. Yeah. And sometimes you just got to pick that moment and go off, and it makes you the rest of your life. Deion Sanders was like that. You know, so uh, Charles Barkley does it in a different way, you know what I mean? But uh, I think uh, being able to say, say what you feel and not be on the script is what made me who I am. I would never just say, okay, here's a script, you know. I knew that I was in Miami on Wednesday. I knew it was 8 o'clock. I knew I'm wrestling Kevin Sullivan. So the, the rest of the minute and a half, I'm going to tell you a story. And that's how it comes about. You know what I mean? That's, uh, you know, that's why the Cowboys, the uh, insurance salesmen, the business suits, they all combined. They all loved me. It didn't matter, all the blacks or whites or whatever. They all gathered to see this happening, whatever it was. It's, you know, this plumber son or whatever the whatever the hell that was created so we teach that a lot to him but uh, the kids at the performance center but I think mainly NXT I give them an opportunity when I get the opportunity to teach and coach them how to give me that opportunity then uh, I let them be their self and if they find their self then you'll pick out of the maybe 20 for one that said okay you're going to make it you're going to be there because we're looking for the next John Cena, looking for the next Steve Austin, looking for the next Hogan, Dusty Rose, Rock, all these guys. And uh, they're there. They just have to, you know, they just have to unleash it. You know what I mean? Dusty, it's been a pleasure and an honor Thank talking you. with you it. so great. much. Have a good great time great. tonight at the fair in Miami. We will, yeah. I'm going to sign a few autographs and get them off and get back in my, my old Jeep, take my wife and head back to Orlando, man. You know what I mean? Maybe I'll get lucky. <laughs>